Good day, everyone. Welcome to Virtual Concert Hall's live music channel. I'm Anna Ospinska. I'm a pianist in Washington, D.C. area, and I'll be hosting this uh, t today's program for you. Um, today's show is uh, focused on a discussion on the topic of motivation. And uh, as always, we are here to connect musicians and our audiences in real-time performances and music news and events from around the entire globe. Throughout the season, we host dozens and dozen, dozens of events, uh, which are designed um, with the aim at helping musicians get forward with their own goals. For some people, the next step may be to perform at the prestigious venues like uh, Carnegie Hall or to play a concerto or perform an aria with orchestras from different countries, or maybe they are looking to win a scholarship to attend a program with a particular teacher somewhere, um, or attend a masterclass. Maybe they're lo looking to record and get their album published, or to have their newly composed music performed and published uh, on uh, with an ensemble or orchestra or solo. So the goals are different, but together with many organizations from many different countries we're putting our efforts uh, in this channel and channel those efforts towards uh, supporting and providing opportunities for all of those different goals there's a lot of opportunities out there <laughs> this uh, little overview of the 2023-24 season and I want to shout out to our composers, composer in residence, Ala Lowry, whose soundtrack was accompanying the uh, program, this uh, little presentation about our um, uh, season. Um, so today's topic is about what drives us as people, as musicians and educators, as creatives, as organizers of all of those events. Motivation is the focus of today's discussion. And I'm very honored to have Rita D'Arcangela and Augustin Antonov joining me for this panel. Giving their perspective on these very hard questions. Um, a few days ago, we had both Rita, who is a uh, flutist from Germany and Italy, and um, August, who is a pianist from France, joining us uh, for in depth programs about them as artists and as educators. So, if you missed uh, these programs, please uh, be sure to visit our channels. We're on many different platforms and uh, find those programs because you will get to know them a lot more in depth and closer um, so but to, um, to introduce to you the um, uh, participants of our today's discussion on motivation what's the better way to introduce a musician than um, through presenting their music their performance so uh, here are performances by Rita D'Arcangela and August Antonov Thank you. 
I could listen to that all day. Thank you so much, August, Rita. Thank you so much for joining us for today's discussion and for your um, never-ending motivation to keep going with uh, your art, with your performances, with your teaching, with your traveling. Um, the life of a musician is full of a lot of um, effort, and uh, you're you're my motivation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me again. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, so just a quick introduction, both uh, Rita and August are um, members of the judges panel for Sound Just Perceiver competitions for Carnegie um, Laureate auditions. And um, Rita is also music director for the upcoming uh, Laureate Flute Ensemble program, which will be uh, hosted in New York in July um, with a performance at the Carnegie Hall. And August is our um, honor, honorable judge for the upcoming coming Rachmaninov competition, uh, which will include performances by um, members of the panel and orchestras and um, great prizes for um, pianists and vocalists, uh, which is coming up um, early in the spring. And uh, both are um, international musicians with uh, a lot of experience uh, with ups and downs, I hope, <laughs> of career and music making, dedicated educators, uh, wonderful uh, people, and uh, coming from different parts of the world. Uh, August is from Bulgaria and France, and um, Rita is from Italy and Germany. And welcome again to our panel. And I'm going to throw it to you immediately. Let's cut to the chase. Uh, sustaining motivation. We all know uh, we can wake up in the morning really excited about this upcoming concert, which uh, which is, you know, or rehearsal, which is in a few days. Um, but that's not a regular morning. Um, there, there's a lot of mornings or evenings or daytimes when um, things don't quite go as glorious and as, um, as expected. So uh, what is your source or sources of the most lasting motivation for you as artists and educators pregnant pause <laughs> <laughs> rita go i'll leave the spot to rita oh okay <laughs> okay rita <laughs> <laughs> do my best okay well i mean for me uh, can relate to my experience what helps a lot in this case you know when of course when you have an upcoming events then your motivation is very high but then there are moments everybody experiences this that you don't have so much uh, happening, no? So I try to have uh, longer time goals. So for example, when I have a time that is not so much happening, I try to say, okay, what can I do productive maybe for a long term, like a, to learn a new concerto, to learn something new, to use this time to, to, to learn new stuff, you know, that I can use later. This helped me a lot, especially in COVID time, for example, or also in other time which I don't have so much happening. And then and then later, you know, and start to think about a new project, for example, a new recording, if it's possible, or maybe for students could be a new new project, new concert program, or looking for new competition, for example, you know, try to always have some motivation, even in long terms, even if it's not now, maybe for next year. And I think as an artist, it's very important, you know, because, the, you know, we, we live on this uh, constant, you know, challenging also. and try to learn new stuff probably not to 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 discover new possibilities uh, um, yeah so so keeping in mind that uh, short-term goals and long-term goals combined yeah. um sustain you uh in a in a motivations are up and downs and um, making the most out of seemingly, you know, disappointing moment, like, um, you know, well, not seemingly, but it's really tragic moment of COVID. Um, mm -hmm. I learned that from you. I, I remember you shared, okay, well, I just set long-term goals for the after the pandemic and work towards those and find motivation and excitement there. August, to you? Yeah, I definitely agree with Rita, uh, I think. And I, and I can definitely speak uh, to experience, uh, with experience about that. Um, motivation, to keep motivation, you really have to think long-term, long-term projects. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we're busy as it is, but uh, when we're planning our seasons, we always have to look one, two years ahead of time. And uh, having that outlook long-term outlook 
helps with the motivation when you're feeling down, when you're feeling uh, lazy, to put it on the way. Uh, <laughs> Don't we all sometimes just, feel lazy, um, right? <laughs> let, let's, when, when you want to just stay in bed in your PJs and, uh, and drink hot tea or hot chocolate or whatever. Uh, it, it, no, it, it does help to have long-term long -term perspective uh, as far as I'm concerned as well. Uh, you know, because that, you know, that gives me that much more to look forward to and that much more to work toward to. Uh, and at the same time, the, you know, those down moments that Rita was mentioned was, is also the moment to, uh, to improve oneself, uh, not, ne not necessarily in music uh, specifically, but, uh, in other domains like, you know, uh, uh, uh focus, you know, uh, d different way of thinking about things. Uh, it, it, there's always something to work on to to help you move to the next level, and and you know. So that's that's what, as all, also for me. Well, you mentioned to um, improving in other uh, dimensions, but in terms of music, how how does that relate? So uh, I I do believe in uh, I do believe in reading about uh, composers, reading about uh, biographies of other pianists, uh, uh, reading about, you know, taking books of, of, of um, piano professors who have written books, you know, uh, or, or other musicians just to, uh, as an inspiration, as a way to to get another perspective on things. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Rita, do you also draw inspiration from, um, you know, reading uh, that kind of literature? Yes, definitely. Also, I remember reading, uh, for example, a bio of uh, uh, many musicians in the past. Yes, that's very true. Also, also other books, of course, about other uh, fields in, in uh, in the in the culture field, of course, but yeah. especially musician life. I remember I was very inspired from a bio of Isaac Stern. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was studying, I was reading about about his Carnegie Hall debut. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is stamped in my mind. About, yeah, yeah, and other things, you know, all, all the yeah, it's very, very, very fascinating. Absolutely, I agree. And also about composer, sure, it's very important. Also, I think it's part of our also education, you know, to know about. What the the composer, the the present, the past, the you know the music is it's such an incredible art, you know. Uh, that I mean, keeps us the motivation. Of, mm. Yeah, it's also part of the exploration of our mm. field. I mean, uh, we have to stay a bit ahead of the curve, to so mm. to speak. Uh, you know, in in, in our cases, uh, Rita and I being high profile, uh, being uh, given what we do, we do have a bit the obligation to stay a bit ahead of the curve as to what's going on what are the uh, new uh, beginning new happenings uh whether it's in whether it's in music or in, in other domains uh because when we teach uh, as we both do mm -hmm. uh, we obviously encounter uh various students with various interests uh, so having that a bit of an understanding of what they they like helps us connect as well with the students that's an interesting point so do you <clears throat> feel as educators are um, you your role is mostly to um educate or to lecture and um to share you know what what you learned from before or is it more interactive more or less on the equal level with your students huh. uh, <laughs> i don't know well uh, i didn't promise you the question yeah yeah yeah, Did yeah I? <laughs> I don't know i look i i'll, I'll say this uh, and rita may may or may not agree with me i think it depends very much on the uh, on the school where one is teaching, on the uh, on the on the students involved, uh, and on the overall objectives for both students, teachers, and the school. Uh, so, uh, 
it really depends it, it's there's no one one answer fits all <laughs> Rita, uh, what do you feel? Yeah, How I would agree that? with that, definitely. Yes, I think it's a very good point. And also, for example, if you have someone very dedicated, uh, which maybe is not always the case, then really you can try to to expire as well, you know, and to, to, to pass on the tradition that you learn and to go to the next generation. But not always is uh, this kind of dedication is there. Yeah, And then in this case, it's also you, you do your best, but you are kind of restricted, you know. So it's very... It's, it's one-to-one -one relation. That's very true, you know. It's uh, and you have to see is the other part, you know. It's not just the okay. This is the the lecture and that's it, you know. It's always the interaction. It's very fascinating in a way. You no know? teaching is uh, especially music instrument. It's very uh, very special thing. So, uh, yeah, I, it is. Many, a, yeah, no. Yeah, I was about to say it's also. Uh, I think it's also uh, that's when we also have to motivate the students. Mm. However, we find whatever motivation we can think of to get them That's to true. do yes. the work that needs to be done. Uh, whether you know, it's hard work. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, uh, that that's where we have to kind of, you know, dig into our our own experiences, mm. our own uh, our, our own history, and come up with some type of motivation, sp motivational speech or whatever uh, for, for the students. Uh. Now, um, this is uh, really some, the kind of motivation people can rely on. Um, and knowing, okay, if I'm having a down day or week or month or two years, like during pandemic, um, kind of being prepared where to look for um, to find ways of, you know, to oh, get away from depression, from, um, you know, all the negative thinking, and uh, instead move, improve, and move proactively and positively forward, uh, knowing where to look for it is uh, extremely important for musicians because uh, um, it's not um, a thornless, um, steady, easy path for musicians, whether young students or, you know, accomplished professionals. But I still want to um, dig a little deeper. Let's say uh, long-term planning, great. But, uh, uh, you know, we'll seek performance opportunities, more opportunities, and more often than not, we get uh, um, a rejection. Mm -hmm. And that's the truth of the, our field. Um, for some people, maybe less. For some people, maybe more. But uh, every musician, especially successful musician like yourselves, I'm sure encountered um, those clusters of time when things just don't go anywhere. And <clears throat> so there's no co concerto to prepare. There's no orchestra engagement. There's no, um, you know, in the current, maybe current position is not quite where we want to be and all of that. So when all fails, all standard things fail where do you go for that source of motivation um not to feel like okay i, I gotta give up this is just not working shall i say something <laughs> go yeah, for go it ahead. <laughs> well for, for me uh, always was my greatest motivation that i i love play the flute so much that my all big fear in life that was that i had to do another job I was always thinking that I cannot have the time to play the flute, you know, that was the, my main inspiration to try everything as possible. And also another thing that helped me a lot is to make many things, that var var a lot of variety. So for example, mm -hmm. if you think that one, you have a plan, you know, it doesn't work, then be ready because sometimes you get an invitation for another thing that you, you don't know, and but maybe it's better or it leads to something else you cannot never imagine. So always be, you know, very, very alert. Maybe you have a plan, but doesn't go this plan, but maybe another plan that's also good in another direction. And I think in this way, the chance comes, you know, maybe you think that, okay, tomorrow I will play concerto with orchestra. Maybe you start to play in a church, but it's very important to, to start to, you know, and then from this can another thing happen. And I think nobody could start from the beginning for, from to the biggest events, or, you know. So this is like, helped me a lot and, and, and still now every because it's not always easy as we know no? you know for any anybody yeah that's incredible to be open to opportunities you didn't pre-planned yeah 
because they do come our way but if we're so narrow focused on particular set of things we want to do then we just don't even notice that they are next to us what do you say august you know uh that that's a great point rita made uh i'll, I'll just say this in uh, uh in the military uh there is a saying that plants don't survive the heat of the battle and that's 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 uh, also very true for for what we do uh i mean we all have plans we all have dreams uh whether we whether uh, we are seasoned professionals whether uh it's students whether it's parents there's always a dream a plan uh but the fact is that plan is not going to survive whatever we encounter and so one has to be ready to take on opportunities that one never thought w w would be there. I mean, uh, I mean, I'll come back to sound expressive. We've talked about it before with you, Anna. With, uh, we talked about it, the, the cover, couple of show uh, with, uh, with uh, other guests. I mean, uh, the COVID, that, that's really what connected us uh, to, to you, Anna, to sound expressive, to virtual concert hosts. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, as much as we as judges, are, as board advisors, we are part of everything that we do for, for virtual concert hall sound expressivo, nothing would have been possible without you launching the idea and then connecting to us to, to contribute. Uh, and that, that's, for example, something that, I mean, until the COVID, nobody would have thought, uh, well, let's do online yes. competitions. I mean, let's Absolutely be honest that. about it. I mean, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let, let's be honest. No one, no one would know. I mean, uh, we would still be without the COVID. Would still be doing uh, uh, competition traveling, however many miles, uh, this, you know, how many, however many days a week, uh, and uh, you know that that's that's a perfect example of an opportunity that. Nobody could up. plan. Yeah. Nobody planned. Nobody planned. Nobody planned and, for it. Yeah. And <laughs> here it is. We are here three years later. Uh, and yeah, that that's the perfect example. Y yeah. Thank you for that example. I, f I forgot how we started out of um, not being able to do it the way we have done it because of the desperate event, which just shut us all off. And then... Um, Many musicians like yourself and and myself too, uh, we f fell into the darkness of depression for a while, but then said, okay, well, what can we do good with this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, and, so yeah. that's exactly the opportunity that, that was Rita was talking about, unexpected. Exactly. Unexpected, but be open-minded to it. Open-minded and s such a welcome opportunity. I mean... Uh, that that's uh, and, and it's not just sound expressivo. We we can talk mm -hmm. about uh, various podcasts that have come up with absolutely the, since the time we, the various uh, uh, various uh, uh, the newspapers programs, uh, yep. programmers all of that stuff you know that has come up that was unexpected and some it wasn't available it wasn't there yeah, exactly. because people some, never thought about it and yeah some people so took right. advantage of it jump jump to the gun and took advantage of the opportunities presented, others did not feel comfortable. Again, that's a, that's a not here or there. Uh, but again, that's again, an expected opportunity. We have to be open-minded to that. And that's where the plan doesn't survive come in. <laughs> that's mean, right. You, 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 have that to, you have to be ready for the unexpected. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, this is such a good point. And um, with this, I want to um, show and share with our viewers the unexpected opportunities which you may not have planned for, but which we at Sound and Progress um, Progressive Musicians with virtual concert halls and with the tremendous help of um, a large community of wonderful musicians like Rita and August, we prepared for this season. So this will be a short promotional um, We'll uh, let our um, guests rest up and get a sip of water while I will present um, the various opportunities. And just like Rita and August underscored, uh, don't get depressed if something which you planned already is not quite working out that way. Be open, 
and um, explore other opportunities you didn't plan for before. So we have this upcoming opportunities for Laureate Ensembles. Um, we invite people to uh, come to New York for a few days, three days in fact, to rehearse intensive workshops, master classes, and rehearsals as an ensemble, and to present the program at the Wilder Seidler Hall at Carnegie Hall. And we have a variety of programs. Uh, let's keep in mind, Variety is important for motivation. So there's all strings ensembles, there's a flute choir ensemble, there's even in, uh, internet castanets uh, uh, choir ensemble. And we also have the vocal ensemble and the cello choir. Those uh, intensive workshops happen in June 18th through July 2nd. We have uh, guitar ensemble um, and the other dates are earlier in April. Um, April 2nd through uh, 4th. Now, the other set of opportunities are audition for uh, performances with various orchestras. This is a call orchestra project which we started last year and we had a lot of uh, good feedback and success and uh, wonderful uh, people joining us for this project. Uh, this year, uh, this season, we have five orchestras uh, which are um, providing the opportunity for musicians to perform concertos and audio with the orchestra in different countries. Now, season awards. Uh, we have a whole big collection of wonderful people and organizations which support our efforts and offer uh, season awards to um, select musicians. Now, what season awards means, you can enter any one of the auditions or competitions throughout the season to be eligible for these awards, which you see on screen. For more details and information of uh, what these awards are and who is eligible, because some of them are for cellists, for pianists, for more mature musicians, for younger musicians. So there is <coughs> a variety <coughs> in there. Please visit um, the awards tab on the, the sandrasperceivercompetition.com website and learn more. Um, there are awards for variety of uh, goals. And um, we are live every day at 12 noon Eastern Standard. And this on screen, what you see is upcoming uh, program um, with the music films which our um, company produced um, about Beethoven symphonies. <laughs> We will be starting those um, in two weeks on Thursdays and Sundays at 12 noon. Tune in. These are uh, wonderful films with in-depth, uh, uh, going in-depth into Beethoven's um, views, his technique and his um, artistry and style and everything with a wonderful um, uh, lecture, Lawrence Rapchak, and uh, with great recordings, uh, which uh, we are very grateful to have uh, permission to use those recordings from Nexus. Um, so this is the upcoming Beethoven. And uh, um, I want to also introduce to you our partners, the um, uh, the group of wonderful companies and musicians and uh, managers, uh, producers who are joining our efforts and this movement is growing. We started with just a few. Now you see on the screen, it's uh, now those uh, logos are so tiny, um, but you can see everyone who has joined this movement on our websites. We're very grateful for these organizations and people behind those organizations. It's always people who do things. It's not just the organization. Um, those people are providing um, a lot of opportunities and sponsoring uh, albums, performances, uh, cash awards, and uh, many, many other opportunities. Please check it out. These are all proven and uh, tested organizations which are, um, um, which are being led by wonderful, dedicated people. And we are on all major platforms. Uh, you can find us on um, YouTube, on Facebook, on Vimeo, on, uh, on Instagram, on all the uh, LinkedIn, on all those major platforms. We are also uh, preparing to announce many collaborations with um, educational platforms around the world in different countries um, where people can also access our uh, programs and um, uh, all the wonderful things which we have to offer 
both to musicians and to the audiences. And now back to uh, Rita and August. I have one more question which I would like us to tackle. Um, so people are infinitely different, of course. And of course, all people are driven by multitudes of different kinds of motivations. Now, for many young people, especially, who are talented in many different areas, it's always a big question. Okay, I'm a good pianist. I won so many competitions and I have all these opportunities I didn't want to lose, but I'm also very gifted in many other areas. And now um, I'm in college, maybe already doing double majors. Now, this is great to be, um, you know, talented and productive and, if, and successful in different areas, but I got to focus at one point on something. So um, f- there, there's a lot of people which come to that dilemma, myself included, at one point. More than one point, um, I tackled a variety of things in which I seem to have had talents and um, gained a certain amount of success. So I can relate even personally to that question. But uh, a lot of young people do ask it, that question, or if they don't voice it, they still tackle it. Um, now, based on the sources of motivation towards you know being productive, being active, being uh, out there. Can you outline what kind of person is best fit to become a professional musician and educator? And again, I want to go back to the sources of motivation because, you know, some people are mostly motivated by being with people. Other people are mostly motivated by, um, you know, uh, money. Uh, other people are mostly motivated by um, attention and, uh, you know, glory or travel. Some people want a job which allows them to travel most. So there's so much variety. If you have, if you can give us a, like a quick scope of areas of motivation, because, you know, there's got to be an answer to, okay, am I going to continue with music as a profession or with chemistry, for example? So to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll let first, uh, go first. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to see you go first. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, look, that's a, that, that's, a, <laughs> that's a deep question that's going to take many hours on discussion. Uh, let's read a book about let, it. Let, but let's before we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah let, let's. Let, no, so I think we have to make a difference in the type of motivation we're talking about uh, as well. Uh, we have the. Um, extra the extrinsic motivation uh, which is external rewards trophies money social recognition Uh, you have the intrinsic motivation which is uh, what one person uh, is is challenging her or himself and then you have a family motivation Uh, traditionally uh, from personal experience I would say the the young young students primarily is the family motivation. Family motivates them to, uh, and then it's helped by potentially winning prizes, the uh, the recognition by their by their family, by their friends, and so forth. Uh, but to come back to your question, I, I think you know it's a tough call to say who can or who cannot. Um, in my my personal opinion is that anybody can do what they want to do from the moment they have the commitment. The commitment uh, is related to motivation, obviously. Um, but obviously, you know, that's, uh, if you put your mind to it, if that is something that you enjoy doing, that you see yourself doing 15 years, 20 years, 50 years later, then why not do it? What What is stopping you? Uh, but obviously that first, that first comes the studies and that's where, that's the difficult part, the studies because there's so much, we struggle so much with the, the various requirements that are put in front of us. Um, but now to, to me, again, to go back to your question, to me, anybody can, can be cut to do it. 
to do to be a musician and educator if they have the love for what we do if they have the love and the passion because we all have passions i mean i have passion for music i have passion for uh, for chess for video games but uh, i know very well that i am much better at music than at coding games <laughs> 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 so uh no but yeah you can do anything you want from the moment you have that motivation that love for what for what we're doing that's my take so the love for the process for not from not 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 for the result when you right. get there but for the journey for the path yes yeah the journey mm -hmm. yeah it, i mean yeah. uh, you know i was saying the the study the students get often encouragements when they get prizes or trophies or medals or stuff like that that's i mean that's a perfect way to motivate uh, along the way obviously but again it's the journey uh, mm -hmm. the end price is going to be whatever you want it to be or uh, mm -hmm. whatever you aim for it to be uh, it's the journey mm -hmm. Rita? yes i agree totally and that's all i think uh, the in the inner motivation very strong also the uh, what you want to achieve with your music uh, in a way that for example for me always looking to the bigger artists and try to to play better day by day it's kind mm -hmm. of you know <laughs> it's i know it's kind of maybe craziness but this is i think this is the biggest motivation that you want to oh i want to do this i want to try this you know i want oh, this could be better this could be this way uh, this is fantastic so it's never ending actually and uh, so I think if you are talented, you are committed, you can really uh, go for it. Uh, but if you feel, for example, some people feel, oh, I don't know, I cannot decide, then maybe you should question a little bit because it's not easy life. It's not an easy life. Uh, it's fantastic, but there are, of course, maybe in other profession, it's more smooth life. <laughs> so if you are in the stage that you don't know, and then maybe you really should look inside you and think, can I live without music? Uh, if the answer is yes, then maybe. You should question, you know, because otherwise... Well, this is a, this is a difficult mm -hmm. question because um, for a lot of musicians, um, maybe it doesn't stay that clear cut, can I live without music? Mm -hmm. I can, you know, even people like Horowitz took a decade off sure. being a professional musician. Did he live without music during that time? I don't think so. But I'm sure he was playing for himself. I cannot uh, imagine it was not playing right. for 10 years. <laughs> so the question is here, people can live with music and be right. professional in another um, job, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, pursue professional path uh, in something else. And I know um, a, a good deal of people who are, um, you know, even Juilliard graduates, I know just off the top of my head, I know a phenomenal violinist, she's a, a Juilliard graduate and she's an attorney. And uh, sure, she lives I mean, with music, however, not with music as a profession. So yeah. she's not an educator. She's not, uh, you know, but she performs in, you know, various settings. Um, and that's not the only um, person I know who took that path. And even among the most fundamental um, figures in music uh, history, let's take Jay's Bach. <laughs> was he professional composer? Was he professional educator, choral director, organist? No. No, but he, he was dedicated to music for sure. His he was dedicated was music. to music. Yeah. But at the same time, I read a big study, German study, on on this. They studied the sources of Jay's Bach's income. Now, how do we identify profession, right? Something which feeds you and your family, first of all, right? <laughs> so, yeah. in the scope of his. Um, income, his revenue, um, uh, the highest percentage of it didn't come from composing or, or directing the choir or even his full-time job position at the cathedral. Um, more than 60% of his income came from his business. I didn't even know he had a business. And his business was to install, maintain, and tune organs. Right, okay. So, even J.S. Bach, who is no, sure, 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 but an, it was an, an epitome music. of being a musician, right? Yeah, but it was something music-related anyway. I mean. Absolutely. 
So, so I'm just let, throwing let me, controversy yeah, in, no, in man, there. Let me, let me Take me off the screen. I'm doing no, controversy. No, 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 man. Let me, <laughs> let me jump in as well because, uh, yeah, you, uh, I mean, you mentioned that that person from Juliet who is now an attorney. Uh, there are lots of those people, but who make those decisions traditionally before they get to Juilliard, uh, because uh, let's let's be honest, uh, music, classical music, is uh, is not the place if you want to become a millionaire. Uh, it's not the place if you want to become the next uh, Taylor Swift. Uh, so, uh, and it's definitely not the place if you want to become, uh, the next researcher that, that find that gets a Nobel prize. Uh, so, uh, but those decisions really come up before they get to Juilliard, uh, because well, for some people, obviously after, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, in the, some situation, but traditionally before they get to the Juilliard level, to the Manhattan school of music or or others, uh, because uh, because family uh, re uh, has repeated them to them non nonstop uh, to make a good living. You have to be a doctor, or you have to be a uh, dentist, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, it's true that if you if you're looking for uh, to to earn a five figure income, uh, maybe this is not the field. <laughs> uh, depend depends on what you do in the field. So ambition. But, uh, amb oh, but you know, ambition translates in different forms. That's true. Tra um, the ambition translates in different forms. True. We all, I mean, we we all uh, we all work in a music business. One because we love it. Two, we're paid to do it let's uh, le let's uh, let's let's say the way it is uh, mm -hmm. i mean uh, i i teach in a in a conservatory i'm getting a salary uh rita is maybe in an orchestra she's getting a salary it's the same 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 deal we're getting paid um, but we do it also because we love it because we mm -hmm. uh, we're dedicated to it uh and so you can make a good living a comfortable living uh, and, uh, you know, having that motivation, that, um, uh, motivation to be better, to get better, uh, doesn't enter into conflict with anything else. Oh yeah. You know? This is such a good point. It is, it is not in conflict. It is actually, uh, go, goes in sync. Um, and I've noticed uh, from my experience, uh, most of the time the motivation is elsewhere, and that's what try, um, actually helps people be successful and um, land good jobs and uh, good engagements and prospects and uh, to to have to earn comfortable living. Yes, you can earn a comfortable living being a professional musician, um, but that's um, given the fact that your motivation. Lay, lay, lays deeper in the uh, desire to walk the journey of becoming communicator through music. Well, yeah, I mean, there's also the cases of people switching to music because uh, because they felt at something else. Uh, that's, that's also the, that's probably not the best way to land mm, in the music business. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. But you got those people as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh that found their calling or what they think is their calling uh, after a crisis and yeah um but uh, none i mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'll, stop, I'll stop there. I'll let uh, I'll let Rita. <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Anyway, <laughs> this is, I think, yeah. yeah this, this, we raised um, on our journey through this program. We raised a lot of uh, brain chat topics, and we need to come back to those. Um, but for today's program, I think we need to um, observe the time. Everyone is busy, and I'm sure both of you have tons of things lined up right after <laughs> and 
Thank you so much, Rita, August, for joining us. And I'm just reminding everyone, Rita and August are wonderful musicians from, uh, from different countries. From uh, August is from Bulgaria and France, and Rita is from Italy and Germany. Um, they are members of our distinguished panel of judges and our wonderful collaborators and supporters of many, many projects for Sound Espresso and virtual concert halls. And I'm very, very grateful for your support and for your time today talking about motivations for musicians. And many, many thanks to the virtual concert halls team, which is Rowan also. You see on the screen many people who are adding their magic abilities and um, they are musicians. They are also producers of these shows. Thank you very, very much. And thank you to our audience for joining us today and always and ever. Please uh, don't feel left out comment, um, leave your questions, and we always monitor all the platforms. We get your questions, your comments, and we will respond. We would like to connect with you and um, get involved with us. Um, send us a message, uh, send us your proposal. Uh, we are open to more and new collaborations. Here you'll find wonderful, warm uh, welcome from musicians and um, music managers and everyone in the related fields. And with that, I'm going to say goodbye for now and see you tomorrow at 12 noon. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, August. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.